This is Rawls' theorem. It tells us that if a function is continuous on a closed interval from A to B, and differentiable on that same open interval, and if its endpoints on the interval are equal, then there must be at least one number C in the interval, such that the derivative at C is equal to zero. One interesting thing we can do with this theorem is prove that a cubic equation has exactly one real root. Of course, some cubic equations have two or even three real roots, but with Rawls' theorem, we can prove that some of them have exactly one root. Now, of course, Rawls' theorem guarantees us some information about the derivative of the function. So, for starters, to prove that this equation has a single root at all, we actually need to use the intermediate value theorem. So we can begin by saying, hey look, f of x, this cubic, it's a polynomial, and so it is continuous. And if we plug in negative 1, for example, we get a negative number. If we plug in positive 1, we get a positive number. So since the function is continuous, in order to pass from negative to positive, it must at some point pass zero. So the intermediate value theorem certainly guarantees a value, say, a, in the open interval from negative one to positive one, because those are the values that we plugged in, so that f of a is equal to zero. So we've proven that this equation does have at least one root. Now we can use Rawls' theorem to rule out the possibility of any other roots. And let me clarify, the only importance of negative one and positive one in this open interval is that over that interval, the function passes from negative to positive. Any other interval where that held true would also work for this proof. So now the idea is that we're going to suppose, for the sake of contradiction, that our function does have another root. That's going to be another point at which the function's value is zero. So we'll have two values at which it's zero. We'll have that one we already know exists at x equals a, guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem where the function is zero. And then we'll assume we have some other one. So we've got an interval between these two values where the function's y value is the same at the endpoints. What I mean when I say that we're supposing this for the sake of contradiction is that we're assuming it's true, but we're gonna show that it leads to an impossibility, and so in fact, can't be true. So again, we're supposing for the sake of contradiction that f of x has another root, let's say b, that's not equal to a, the one that we already know exists, and let's just assume that a is less than b. Whether a is less than b or the other way around doesn't matter, this just helps us keep our notation consistent. Now, we know that f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, where a is the x-coordinate of the first root that we know exists, and b is the x-coordinate of the second root that we're assuming exists. We know that f of x is continuous on this interval because it's a polynomial. We also know that it's differentiable on the open interval from A to B, because again, it's a polynomial. And so Rawls' theorem applies. We've got continuity, we've got differentiability, and we know that the value of the function is the same at A and at B. The values of the function at the endpoints of this interval are the same, because it's zero at the beginning and at the end. They are roots. So we can apply Rawls' theorem to conclude there exists a number C, between a and b, so that f prime of c is equal to zero. Rawls' theorem guarantees this must be true, a point at which the derivative is zero. And that is our contradiction, because we know what this function is, and so we can find its derivative. Apply the power rule, and we find its derivative is 3x squared plus 2, which is clearly positive for all x, because it's a positive number, 2, plus a non-negative number, 3x squared. That's always positive, so there's no way there could be a point where the derivative is equal to zero. Hence, Rawls' theorem forces a contradiction. And the only reason we were able to apply Rawls' theorem is because we assumed that f of x had another root not equal to a. Hence, it must be that it doesn't have another root not equal to a. And so, x equals a is the only root of this cubic equation. There is the cubic equation in question, and of course it's single root, and that's just an interesting example of how you can apply Rawls' theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Love, love.
stressed out, honey. I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what. Don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie. I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me 